So what's my conclusion? Is this guitar as bad as some people say, or should you go out and buy one? So here we have the ubiquitous Squire Affinity Strat. Now depending on who you speak to, these are either some of the best value guitars you can buy or just cheap junk. What I'd say is if I was a beginner, I wouldn't want to be playing on this guitar as is and I'll explain why as we go through the video. As we go through the video, we'll look at the specs of this guitar, break down the different elements, what's good, maybe what's not so good, and I'll include plenty of sound samples, and later on I'll also do a side-by-side -side with my full-blown American Strat. So this guitar actually belongs to my dad, and he's kind of been learning to play for quite a few years, mostly on his acoustics, but this is his only electric. And I know he bought it in Argos, which anyone in the UK will know is like a catalogue company, but you go in and you get a little pencil and fill out a form, and they go out the back and get what you've ordered. It kind of sells everything in there, from washing machines to, you know, toys and everything. So they certainly don't know anything about guitars in there, and certainly won't have done any setup on it or anything like that. I know he paid about £200 for this guitar, including the full pack with the amp and the accessories. From what I can tell, this particular one is made in Indonesia and is dated to about 2005. Now I'm pretty sure he didn't buy it as early as that, so maybe that's a symbol of how long these kind of things can sit around in some of those big shops. <laughs> So let's start the breakdown at the headstock end and we get the larger Strat style headstock similar to what Fender used from the late 60s into the 70s with a black Squire logo. Now a lot of people will say that a black logo on a Squire is a sure sign that it's a lower quality model. Personally I've not really experienced that but you know it might be a sign that these ones that come in the packs were slightly cheaped out on in some ways. In terms of the tuners these are just pretty standard Squire fare. You know they're obviously cheap. I've complained a lot about the tuners on previous Squire videos, but this guitar, I don't think it's seen much action, and at the moment at least, they are doing the job. Whether they last is another question. We've got a plastic nut here, and it's fairly well cut to be fair. If I was being ultra critical, you could say it could be shaved in a little bit on these edges here to bring it more smoothly in line with the neck, but that's been really, really picky. <laughs> expect proper maple neck here with the skunk stripe running through it now the finish on this neck is actually really nice on the back here I find some of these cheap guitars can feel a bit raw but this has definitely got a nice satin finish to it but not sticky at all and just super smooth with this being an older model you actually get a genuine rosewood fingerboard which you know is a bit of a luxury these days even on much more expensive guitars with most of the squires now using Indian laurel and you know the Mexican fenders using Pal Ferro instead so real rosewood board is is a bit of a bonus on these old ones but this one does look a bit dry and looks like it could do with some oil on it. Now in terms of the fret ends I'd say these are decent probably on par with my Mexican fenders. You can feel them a little bit and anyone who's really worried about it could spend a bit of time with a file tidying it up a little but you know certainly nothing to be ashamed of on the Squire here. <laughs> to the body and I'm not 100% sure what wood this guitar is made from but mid 2000s made in Indonesia you would expect this to be Agathis and it fits with that you know it's not too heavy not too light just the usual for a strap and it looks pretty good to me there's a pretty obvious join which runs along here that's pretty standard even on American made fenders to see joints like that in the body. Doesn't necessarily mean this is a two piece because some of these have a veneer and then multiple pieces underneath. But for me, there's no issue with the body wood here. In terms of the three color sunburst, look, this is obviously a hard, thick poly finish, but it's been applied really evenly. No blemishes that I can see. And I actually think the color balance is really good here. Unlike my Mexican sunburst strap where it's like glowing orange, this is really nicely done. And I'll put a shot up side by side with my Made in the USA jazz bass and you'll see there's nothing for the Squire to be ashamed of. <laughs> Now 
Now let's look at some of this hardware, starting with the bridge here. And this is just a really standard, kind of cheap, vintage style bridge. It's kind of doing the job though, it's not completely terrible. The obvious problem that this screw stuck right out and this saddle's way back. So I have to look at that because that'll be throwing the intonation off. But overall, the bridge is kind of doing the job. My main issue though is this trem arm and look at the amount of movement I've got here before it even starts moving the bridge. That's really not great and I know it's kind of a common thing on strats that you need to put some tape or a spring in here to tighten it up but you know this is kind of a crazy amount of movement and of course I could tighten it that way but then it's so tight here that if you want to move it out of the way whilst you're playing then that's no longer possible. I would say though I've used this trem arm a bit and uh, you know the tuning's not terrible with it so it is usable contrary to what a lot of people think about these Squire strats. Now in terms of the controls it's pretty obvious moving this switch that it's not that robust and is a bit of a cheap component but for now it's doing its job. In terms of the knobs I've sometimes had some problems on Squires where they're not lined up that well and therefore don't move that smoothly but on this guitar they all seem absolutely fine. So the controls might be a bit cheap but they're really all just doing their job perfectly well. One other thing to mention is that the pit guard here is the thicker single ply variety. Now a lot of people don't like these thick pit guards because on a real fender they're much thinner when they're single ply but those ones tend to warp a lot in my experience and all I can say here is you know this is not warped at all. I've had these thicker pit guards on other squires and they've not warped so all good with me. then looking at the pickups and on the face of it these look like classic kind of vintage staggered pole piece single coils but no doubt underneath they'll be ceramic so you're not going to expect to get the full vintage character but you will have been hearing clips of these throughout the video so you can make up your own mind about whether they sound good and later on we'll do a comparison with the full-blown American Strat so you can hear if there's any difference there. So that's the specs and for the price it all seems pretty decent. So why then, at the beginning, did I say I wouldn't want to be playing this guitar as is if I was a beginner? Well that comes down to playability, so let's take a further look. So apologies if you can see a bit of the tripod, it's the only way I could get the shot, but from this angle you can see just how high the action is on this guitar, i.e. how far away the strings are from the frets, and that makes it much harder to play, because every note I fret I need to press down much further than I should do. Now presently these strings are about 4 millimeters, the bottom of the string to the top of the fret and really we need to get that down nearer 2 millimeters. so really the strings are twice as far away from the frets as they should be. Now the reason the action is so high is because the neck's got too much what we call relief in it, that is that it's bowing out this way under the pressure of the strings. So the strength of the strings pulls against the neck and makes it want to bow out like that and in this case it's got really bad. So we tell this by holding down at the first fret here and then we can also hold down at the very last fret here with my little finger and then when I press in the middle I'm looking to see if there's a gap. And here, because that string moves a lot, there's a lot of a gap in the middle between the top of the fret and the string, which tells me that the neck is bowing out this way, otherwise that gap wouldn't be there. Now most of the time, you just want the slightest gap there to allow the string to move without rattling, but in this case, that's much too much of a gap. So what we need to do is adjust the truss rod down at this end, which will help bring the neck back straighter and remove that gap and bring the action down. So now to adjust this, I've got the Allen wrench in. I've loosened off the D and G strings just to make the space there. What I'm gonna do first is just bring this back anti-clockwise to check that it moves and that moves really smoothly. So now what I'm gonna do is quite steadily, just kind of half a turn at a time, go clockwise and see if we can tighten this up and straighten up the neck. So first turn. That's moving really nicely, I think, and I can really feel that biting. And here we go again. I can really feel that tightening now. So overall, so far, we've probably just done two quarter turns of the wrench in the socket there, but I can really feel it tightening, and I think that'll make a difference. Okay, so I just spent about 10 minutes working on the guitar and got it to an acceptable playing condition. Could be better if I spent longer on it, but for now it's all right. And it needed quite a bit of tweaking on this truss rod to get this neck back straight. But in the end, it turned smoothly and I've got it back to where I wanted. I'm down to about 2mm on the low E at the 12th fret, which is what I like. 
Now I think the reason why this was so out of whack and the neck was so bowed forward is because these are not the original strings. These guitars come with nines on them, gauge nine strings initially, and these are definitely heavier than that and I know my dad's changed them. And when you put heavier strings on, it creates more force on the neck and causes it to want to bow out more. So it will need a truss rod tweak if you change the gauge of strings. So this is not necessarily a problem with Squire and their manufacturing or their setup process, but this is the reality for a lot of beginner guitarists who don't know about maintenance. They're playing on guitars which are much harder to play than they should be. The other thing I've been tweaking then is the bridge. And we saw earlier that this D-string saddle was right back here. So I pushed that back in, but really I need to spend some time fine tuning this intonation to get the guitar playing spot on in tune all the way up the neck because it looks like that has never been done. The other thing then is as I straighten out the neck and the action came down I found that some of the strings the D and the G were choking out and that was because the saddles needed raising up slightly at the bridge here because really what you want is to see a curvature of your saddles across like this humped over to match the curvature of the fingerboard here and it looks like that had never been done either. So you know these might have been things that have gone out of whack whilst my dad's owned the guitar but I'm guessing this guitar's never really had a decent setup at any point. So I don't hold it too much against Squire for these few setup issues because I tend to find whatever price point you're buying at a guitar might need a few tweaks but you know if you're a beginner and you're buying a cheap guitar like this there might be things on it that are kind of way out of how they should be set up but you just don't know and that makes your guitar learning journey so much harder because the guitar is so much harder to play. So now the guitar's playable let's do a side-by-side -side sound comparison with my full-blown made in the USA American original Stratocaster which costs around eight times more than the Squire at about £1600 and I think it shows that despite this massive price difference the Squire is actually capable of some pretty decent sounds. <laughs> What's my conclusion? Is this guitar as bad as some people say or should you go out and buy one? Well let me start by saying firstly that at its core this is a fundamentally decent guitar. The body, the neck, the fretwork is all good and I've got no real complaints. However, there are some areas where they've obviously cheaped out like the switch, the bridge and the tuners. And obviously with this one we found quite a few setup issues, albeit a few years down the road from it being bought. Having said all that, then if this is the guitar you can afford, then it'll really get the job done. Whether you're a beginner or you want to gig and record, then it'll just do what it needs to do. Is it going to be as enjoyable as having a full-blown American Strat? Well, maybe not. But then at this price point, you really wouldn't expect it. But fundamentally, it sounds like a Strat and it plays like a Strat. But ultimately, would I recommend that you buy the Squire Affinity Strat? Well, yes and no. This is a basic guitar that will get the job done. But I think at some point, if you get really into guitar playing, you will want to upgrade. So I feel if you can afford the extra money for a Squire Classic Vibe, then that's the way to go. Because those are really great guitars, which then do start to compete with some of the Mexican and American guitars. And something that I feel can last you a lifetime of playing. Whereas at some point, you may well outgrow this. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.